President Joe Biden's first foreign trip, which he's on right now, comes at about the same point in his presidency as the last president's first trip abroad. It's a pretty incredible set of contrasts. Um, first of all, for the second time in my adult life as a journalist, you have a Democratic president attempting to clean up the damaged relationships, some in runes, left behind by his Republican predecessor. Global confidence in the new American president has already swung up by more than 50 points. A Pew Research survey of 12 nations finds 75 percent of confidence Biden will do the right thing regarding world affairs compared to 17 percent at the end of Donald Trump's term. Again, not hard to see why when you look back at the debacle that was President Trump's first foreign trip in May of 2017. Um, you may remember this. His first stop was strangely the authoritarian monarchy of Saudi Arabia, where King Salman literally rolled out the red carpet for Trump's arrival. The streets of the capital were filled with American flags. Even the men on horses accompanying his motorcade waved the stars and stripes. Billboards went up featuring his face and one of his tweets. At a welcome ceremony, Trump joined in a ceremonial sword dance, awkwardly bopping and flopping his sword with the music. His Secretary of Commerce, Wilbur Ross, Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, uh, fired by tweet less than a year later. They also got on the action. Things only got weirder the next day when President Trump, the Saudi king, the Egyptian uh, president, walked into a darkened room at a new center for combating extremism and placed their hands atop a glowing orb for nearly two whole minutes. The Internet had a lot of fun with that one, comparing it to Lord of the Rings and Wizard of Oz. And from there, Trump went on to Israel, where he visited the Holocaust Museum and Memorial in Jerusalem, left this strangely upbeat note in the guest book, quote, it is a great honor to be here with all my friends. So amazing. And we'll never forget, exclamation point. The president later headed to the Vatican. Uh, he and his family met with Pope Francis, who looks like he's waiting for someone to tell him this is all a joke, before continuing on to Belgium for the NATO summit. Trump took on a strong I'm not here to make friends attitude in Brussels, shoving aside the prime minister of Montenegro to get to the front of the pack of leaders ahead of a group photo. Then he engaged in a bizarre white knuckle handshake grip off with French President Emmanuel Macron. When it came time for the formal remarks, he basically demanded his counterparts pay up. NATO members must finally contribute their fair share and meet their financial obligations. But 23 of the 28 member nations are still not paying what they should be paying and what they are supposed to be paying for their defense. This is not fair to the people and taxpayers of the United States. Final stop back in Italy for the G7 brought one last bit of photo op drama when six of the seven leaders strolled through town after the traditional group picture while the American president chose to follow behind in a golf cart. OK, yeah, that was a weird drug trip or something. Uh, after four years of that, it's refreshing to see an American president abroad, you know, engaging in diplomacy, dealing with complex multilateral issues. There are a lot of them. Um, but also not to mention just behaving like a normal person, not making us worry he's going to like rough up someone on the way to the camera.